You don't always want a program to do exactly the same thing every time you run it. A game, for example, wouldn't be very interesting if it always did the same thing regardless of what you or the other players were doing. So you might want to get your program to make a decision about what it's going to do based on a variety of things, the value of variables, uh, user input, etc. Um, some courses also call this um, selection, um, but I'm used to calling it decisions. So um, imagine we're going to get, uh, imagine we're going to take a number. Okay, so uh, we're going to say number equals just a whole number. That's fine. Uh, so input, oops, uh, give me a number. And then what we're going to do is we're going to comment on that number. So we're going to tell, tell the user whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so to do that, most programming languages and indeed things like uh, Excel have this if um, command or construct, and usually uh, it takes a similar form. So you're doing some sort of test or comparison. So, for example, if we were looking for a negative number, we're going to say if number is less than zero so that's my comparison so if it's less than zero it's a negative number um, so we're going to end that with a colon and then the action that we want the program to take is indented so I'm just going to print that's negative so let's run that and see what happens so I run my program it's asking me for a number and I put in a number that is negative and it says that's negative what's this program going to do if I put in a number that's not negative so I'm going to click run and I'm going to put in a positive number so plus five and in that case it's not doing anything because we haven't told it to do anything we've told it what to do if it's negative but um, what about um, what, what about if it's positive? So there's two ways we can go here. If uh, also has um, an alternative. So you can say things like if it's less than zero, print negative. Otherwise, and the um, construct for that is just else, um, print that's positive. So in this case, if we run the program, if we put in minus four, my three doesn't really matter. It'll say that's negative. If I run it again and I say uh, seven, it will say that's positive. Okay. Uh, what you can also do is you could just say um, if number is greater than zero, uh, that's positive. You need to be a little bit careful using multiple ifs uh, like that because if you don't get your um, if you don't get your conditions exactly right you might end up with um, two things being triggered or indeed none so at least if you use else that you know that one or the other is definitely going to happen so in this case for example if I did it like that uh, and I run it can you see a situation that uh, might arise where nothing is going to be output well what I've said here is if it's less than zero we're going to say it's negative if it's greater than zero we're going to say it's positive but there is actually one other case, isn't there? So what's going to happen if I say it's zero? Well, again, nothing. So if I'd have done it like it was before with with um, else, actually, that would, have, that would have given me the wrong answer, wouldn't it? Because zero isn't positive. So um, in, in that case, using two ifs, actually gave me a slightly better result in that it didn't say anything for zero. Uh, there is a third case actually with Python which is um, we can actually sell say uh, L if. So we can say so that's like another if but it only um, only does that check if the first check fails. So if it's less than zero we're going to say it's negative um, and then we're going to check if it's greater than zero. So it doesn't really matter what order we do this in, but I'm going to do this test first. So if it's less than zero, we're going to say it's negative. If it's not, we're going to do another test. So we're going to check whether it's positive. And then the third option, third condition is um, else. So this is the kind of the catch all at the end. So if it's not positive or it's not negative, then it must be zero. 
Okay, so let's run that and see what that does. So positive number says it's positive. Negative number says it's negative and zero it says that's zero. So that's that's working. Um, elif, not all programming languages have that elif um, structure. So you could also um, do it like this. So you could actually do what we call nested ifs. So then we'd need to remember to indent the um, the second if. So what we're saying here is if it's less than zero, say it's negative. Otherwise, do all of this. So some other programming languages, JavaScript, for example, uh, might require you to do something like this. That should give you um, the same result because this if only occurs if the number is um, not less than zero. So it should give the same result, hopefully. So minus five is negative, zero is zero, and two is positive. So we can do it like that. Um, talking of other programming languages, some programming languages have uh, a thing called a switch case um, thing where, where you can have kind of multi, almost like multiple choice. So rather than saying if it's this then do that and if it's that do then do that, um, you can say if it's one do this, if it's two do that, if it's three do that. Um, but Python doesn't support that. So that's um, what we call selection or making a decision and it has a uh, the word if it has some sort of comparison and again you can use and or or so you could say if it's um, less than zero or you know if it's um, begins with the word minus for example you could check for other things including the text representation of numbers and um, you can do things like that as well so you can use and or not and other comparisons